Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanut here. And today I have a review for you. It's for a CPU cooler. This is made by Spire and it's a Thermax Eclipse 3 or a TME 3. Let's take a closer look now uh, at that uh, CPU cooler and then we'll actually put it on a kit and see how well it performs. All right, so on the outside of the box we have uh, just the uh, logo and a picture inside at one of the 120 millimeter fans. There's a section on the features, but I'll get to that as we uh, take a, a real close look at it when we open the box. But we have that on the front, a nice handle on the top, but it does have some heft. It's a pretty solid package here. Um, again, product specifications on the side of the packaging. Um, discussion on the next evolution of this um, Thermax uh, Eclipse CPU cooler series. So this is um, a, uh, another one in a series of Thermax um, CPU coolers. So now let's take a look, open it up and look inside the box. All right, well inside the package we have what looks to be an AMD backplate, then three bags that are labeled for different uh, socket sets. This set here is for um, socket 1366, 1156 and socket 775 and since this fixed 1156 imagine it's 1155 as well then we have one for AMD unique sockets that's a K8, AM2, AM2 plus and AM3 we have then unique one for Intel 2011 LGA 2011 sockets and we also have uh, two uh, PWM uh, extension cables one for each fan and then we have one of the uh, Spire fans uh, right here. This is um, the other one is actually mounted onto the uh, cooler, which we're going to take a look at right now. Now the construction of the CPU cooler itself is aluminum and uh, copper, and you see the copper base down there. Now there are five heat pipes that uh, come through the aluminum stacked fins, contact with your CPU and up through to disperse the heat. You, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, nicely designed, nice, uh, nice evenly spaced fins. Uh, it's a nice looking, uh, that's a nice looking cooler. And there is almost a slight black finish to it, so I like that. It's not uh, in your face shiny, but it's got a nice uh, dark tint to it that uh, kind of matches the uh, the smoke color of the fans. Dimensions of the cooler are five inches by two and three quarter inches by six inches. And the fans that come with the uh, Spire TME3 are Spire Black Star. They're seven blade design. It's all one solid uh, molded construction. They are rated at uh, 600 to 1800 RPM. They have a nano bearing design. The noise level is 10 to 22 dBA. Airflow at 74.63 and the static pressure on these are 2.86. So uh, overall, um, pretty solid um, spec fans uh, that would work obviously here on this cooler and could be good also for some water cooling radiators. Um, they also have a 70,000 hour uh, life expectancy with a five year warranty. All right, so the pieces that we need to install the uh, TME 3. Uh, onto an 1155 motherboard is the uh, backplate. It's a universal backplate, so this universal backplate is needed. The backplate um, has a uh, side that's insulated and a side that is not. So this is the piece that's going to be in the bottom, and this is the side uh, that will come in contact with the motherboard uh, with a couple other pieces. We have uh, four uh, screws. They're going to come up. These posts will come up through this plate. Then we have uh, some um, some nuts that go on it and some washers that'll uh, keep those posts here and then uh, we'll install it into the motherboard and then using the uh, mounts we'll mount a fan to the uh, CPU cooler and get it installed on top of the motherboard. Alright so the uh, that's the assembly of the TME3 onto this motherboard uh, one of the things, a lesson learned when you're installing the fans on it, it's easier to put the anti-vibration mounts uh, onto the uh, the tower, onto the aluminum uh, fin blocks here, 
and then mount the fans to them. So uh, even with all of the, the you know this particular motherboard's uh, blocks around here, this guy fits on here, and the installation was pretty straightforward. And the only other thing I had to do was uh, connect the power up to the fans. All right, so uh, we have it installed. Now it's time to uh, see how it performs. Let's get it on the test bench. All right, now that we have the TME3 mounted on a motherboard, and that motherboard happens to be the ASRock Z77 OC Formula motherboard. Uh, it also has 16 gig of a Vexir uh, RAM. That's 1600 megahertz RAM at 999-24 timings. Uh, the video card on there is really nothing to speak of. That's just a uh, 7600 GT, just something I had laying around uh, for this test monitor. And uh, power supply is a uh, Hale NZXT. 1000 watt power supply. The uh, OS disk is a uh, OCZ Vertex 3 120 gigabyte drive. Uh, now as far as testing is concerned, what I'm doing is I'm using uh, OCCT version 4.3.2 and I have it uh, set on the uh, CPU Linpack section and I'm running it uh, with 64 bits AVX uh, Linpack enabled and using all logical cores. Now I run it for 30 minutes. I have an idle period of one minute in the beginning and at the end. And you can see right now it's currently running at uh, 4, four uh, gigahertz. So uh, I have that uh, running right now. But I will run it at uh, 3.5, the stock speed. I will run it at 4, which is uh, what it's running at now. And I'm also going to run it at 4.3. Now one thing to point out is um, right now I'm running this at 4 gigahertz and the voltage in the BIOS is set at 0.98 when I run it at 3.5 I have the voltage down to 0.850 and when I run it at 4.3 the voltage will be at 1.05 so uh, this chip will uh, run a lot cooler than the default voltage settings that these motherboard or this motherboard will give it so uh, I was able to uh, work it down to those three voltage settings so uh, let me uh, get through the testing and what we'll do is we'll test the uh, average out the four cores uh, attempts, subtract that from ambient temperature to give us our delta T at each of those uh, settings, 3.5, 4.0, and 4.3. And then uh, and we'll see how it does. And then I'll come back and show you the results. All right, so we finished up with testing. Um, let's talk about the assembly. Uh, the assembly was pretty straightforward, uh, although and according to the instructions you're supposed to put the thermal paste on the bottom of the CPU cooler and I found uh, doing that that it resulted in um, uh, worse temperatures. Uh, I actually had to remove the uh, heat sink off of there and I reapplied uh, thermal compound directly onto the CPU uh, itself, the chip itself like I normally would do. But the instructions tell you to put it on the uh, bottom of the cooler and then set that on the CPU. Now I don't know if it was my application of it uh, or also I did change the uh, uh, the TIM that I used. I used MX4 when I re remounted it so you know it, it could have been um, just uh, the application uh, putting it on the base first and then mounting it onto the CPU maybe it just didn't get it centered or um, you know or the the thermal interface material that I that that they give you uh, you know is not as good as uh, MX4. So other than uh, that uh, step of applying the compound to the bottom of the cooler assembly was uh, straightforward and easy to do and even with the um, constraints that I had around this CPU um, there's a lot of uh, raised um, heat sinks around the CPU on this motherboard but uh, this cooler fit right in there without any problems didn't uh, really uh, mess with the RAM at all and uh, overall good easy installation uh, and that's important now the looks of this cooler is pretty sharp. I think it's a very sharp looking uh, cooler. The uh, black nickel coating on the aluminum fins is uh, nice and uh, you know it, it's very uh, it was polished very nicely and I think it looks great in the case and the smoke colored fans uh, that mount on this guy uh, also aid in that. So uh, overall good looking sharp looking cooler nice profile nice design. Now for performance I was able to uh, run three overclocks on the chip using this cooler. Um, I started out with the standard um, stock uh, speed at 3.5 megahertz. Uh, that uh, was run at a 0.85 volts. Uh, this chip definitely
can run under much lower voltage than this motherboard would normally give it. And the under load, the average of the four cores was 44.25 uh, C. Uh, ambient at the time was 21.5. And so the delta T on that was 22.75 uh, degrees for the uh, stock speed uh, under load. Now at a 4.0 overclock, I had the voltage set to 0.98 volts and the average of the four cores was 58 degrees C with a 22.5 degree uh, ambient that yielded a 35.5 degree delta T. Then at the 4.3 overclock, uh, the voltage I had to use to get that was 1.05 volts uh, that yielded um, you know, four cores averaged at 68.5 degrees uh, with a 23 degree ambient at the time and that has a 45.5 degree delta T. And then uh, the highest overclock I was able to squeeze out of it uh, with this cooler um, was 4.5 uh, megahertz uh, and that I had to use 1.14 volts in order to get that overclock uh, stable. Um, that had about a, an 81.75 degree average core temperature and uh, ambient at the time was 24.5 degrees with a so that was a 57.25 degree delta T. Now OCCT uh, would uh, drop out of the uh, test if any of the cores reached um, 85 uh, degrees a C or more. Now actually one of the cores ran a little bit hotter so in order to get that 4.5 degree overclock to pass I actually bumped up core number one to 87 degree fail. Um, so with that the other ones were under that but still you're talking in the uh, mid 80s um, on each of those cores to, to get that 4.5 overclock um, to uh, complete the testing. Um, so um, that's pretty hot uh, obviously and uh, um, and just to give you a frame of reference, um, I had a Fantex uh, cooler on the same motherboard, same chip. Um, that's the Fantex TC14PE. And I was able to get a 4.7 overclock out of that stable um, at 1.216 volts. Uh, and the uh, average of the cores was in the, um, in the low 80s. So um, that Fantex cooler, of course, is about twice what this cooler costs. It's also massive. It's much bigger cooler as well. So that kind of a cooler, just giving an idea, this chip is capable of running very high overclocks. But for this, um, the CPU cooler, basically it, it'll to good, take care of and it's happy with um, overclocks in, you know, in the mid-range. You know, a 4.3 overclock, this was doing fine and uh, stable. And so, um, you know, for, for running your chip, if you're just going to use this uh, to uh, make sure you have some uh, headroom on your chip running at stock or with turbo, this is a perfect cooler to do that. Uh, if you do want to run a mild overclock on it from there at 4.3 um, with, uh, you know, with a mild volt on it, then uh, you should be able to uh, do that without any problems. But if you're looking for a high overclock on air, uh, you know, and you're doing some, you know, heavy duty benchmarking, you know, this is not uh, going to be the cooler for you. So, uh, so again, uh, you know, again, great assembly, uh, great looks and good uh, performance. Uh, again, not for the uh, for the high end uh, crowd, but uh, uh, I, you know I, I would uh, I would definitely put this into um, uh, customer builds um, for some uh, you know basic system uh, builds. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and favorite, and if you're so inclined, please subscribe. Uh, and again, big thanks to uh, Performance PCs for uh, making this review possible and providing this cooler for me to review for you. That's it from Runs and Nut. Thanks for watching.